Hey everyone, welcome to the debut episode of my new show, Shinkara. This show is mainly about Japanese games, RPG, action, adventure, and everything else in between. You're all big fans of these games, right? What's that? Did someone say, no? Well then, I suggest you run, or you could stay and see what happens. But for the rest of you, let's take a look at one of the most beautiful and underrated games this generation, Valkyria Chronicles. So, what is it about Valkyria Chronicles that makes it worth mentioning? Well, everything, really. There's seriously nothing quite like it. Valkyria Chronicles' blend of gameplay elements, stunning cel-shaded graphics, and engrossing story combine to create one of the most unique gaming experiences available. It's such a shame that it gets lost in the shuffle when people discuss the best games of the HD era because it totally belongs in the discussion. While it's garnered a strong cult following over the years and was critically acclaimed at launch, it seems like enough people still don't know about it. I feel like Valkyria Chronicles fall into obscurity, at least in the West, was due in large part to where Sega took the series afterwards. The next two sequels were on the PSP, number three never making it outside of Japan, and its latest iteration is a web-based card game? What? Enough of the dark times, let's get to the nitty gritty. As previously mentioned, Valkyria Chronicles blends genres in a really unique way. It borrows aspects from both strategy and third-person shooter games to provide deep and challenging gameplay. Before each battle, you're given a small briefing detailing the mission objectives and what troops you might want to bring in. You're then allowed to place your troops on predetermined spots on the battlefield. You'll have a mandatory tank in almost every mission and five varied classes to choose from that include the Scout, which can run the farthest and has a balanced attack, the Shock Trooper, which can't run as far as the Scout, but packs a much bigger punch and can take more damage. The Lancer, mainly meant for taking out tanks and heavier vehicles. The Sniper, good for taking out enemies at long distance, but can't take much damage. And the Engineer, which can refill ammo and repair your tank. Picking the right combination of troop types is crucial, depending on the mission objectives. However, if you do end up picking the wrong ones, you can have them retreat and call for appropriate backup. The missions start off rather basic, either capturing an enemy base or defeating all the enemies, but as Valkyria Chronicles goes on, the missions become more varied and dynamic. For example, trying to stay hidden at night with one of your troops not being able to move very fast, or trying to take out a massive tank before it reaches your base. This helps prevent the game from getting stale and keeps you on your toes. Another layer of strategy is laid on by how the battles actually play out. While they are turn-based, characters aren't limited to move once per turn, Instead, they have an AP meter which depletes whenever they move. If you choose to move the same character more than once per round, you can. They'll simply start off their next turn with less AP. This plays a big part in how you decide to spend your turns. You don't want to take out an enemy, but then leave one of your troops vulnerable to attack when it's the enemy's turn. <laughs> Just like I did there. The other part of the combat is the shooting. Once per turn, you can go into target mode and take a shot. There's sort of a risk-reward aspect to it all because you can take the higher percentage shots but take longer to kill the enemies, or take the low percentage shots and possibly kill them in a few shots. Certain classes also have the ability to throw grenades or heal squad members. All this just adds another layer to the gameplay and allows you to mold the battles to your playstyle. After each successful mission, you're allotted experience points and funds to further upgrade your squad between missions. With funds, you can adjust your weapons for better accuracy and power, create gear to increase your defense, and customize your tank to your playstyle. You can also spend experience points to upgrade certain classes and earn new commands for Welkin to issue during battles. Valkyria Chronicles does an excellent job of allowing the player to experience the game the way they want with such a wide variety of options. While there definitely are certain classes better suited for certain missions, there's never one right way to go about completing them. While the gameplay is ridiculously deep, it's only made that much more compelling by the story surrounding it. Two military superpowers are in all-out war with one another over an increasingly vital resource known as Ragnite. The story centers around Gallia, a smaller nation caught in the middle of this war, and a young lieutenant, Welkin Gunther. There's certainly no shortage of political intrigue, like any story about war. 
but the majority of the story centers around Welkin's platoon, Squad 7. The Valkyria Chronicles is very much a character-driven story that delves into how people handle war, rather than an epic war story that happens to have characters in it. The very beginning of the game is a great example of this. What seems like any normal cutscene may very well be one of the best openings to any game I've ever played. Alicia, Welkin, and his sister Asara are all taking a quiet stroll through their town, talking about fond memories they have of it. The whole scene is charming and you begin relating to the characters with how special it all is to them. This is a setup for what happens later on in the story. Everyone's eventually fighting to protect their home, but before it all happens you actually see why fighting is important to them. Other characters in Valkyria Chronicles deal with deep-seated issues such as loyalty and prejudice. These characters all feel relatable and real instead of the basic tropes common to the genre. One of my favorite scenes in the game, which I don't really feel is any kind of spoiler, is when Alicia and Welkin escape safely to a cabin in the night. There's an enemy soldier who makes his way to the cabin, but has been badly wounded. Instead of taking him out in cold blood, Welkin and Alicia comfort him in his final moments. This scene brings out the human aspect to war. People can get caught up in it thinking it's just about people trying to kill each other, when really everyone's still human and have family they're fighting for back home. The scene shows a different side of war in a way few other games have. It's moments like these that make Valkyria Chronicles truly special. I feel like it's a storybook you're playing out as well, and in many ways it is. Valkyria Chronicles is a name that insinuates the retelling of a story, and the game even progresses through its various chapters in what it calls book mode. The graphics also have this filter on them that gives the feeling like it was all drawn in a book and is now coming to life before your eyes. There's also a couple of cool extras for those hardcore fans. When selecting your troops, you can use Vice and Ica from Sega's Dreamcast RPG, Skies of Arcadia, as playable characters. And while the medic is never referred to by name, she draws a striking resemblance to Fina. For the purists out there who want to experience the game with the Japanese voice work, and you know who you are, you'll be glad to know that the option is available for both sound and text if you so choose. At the end of the day, I have a really hard time thinking of something negative to say about Valkyria Chronicles. It can be rather difficult at times without a guide, and if you lose a battle, you'll feel frustrated for needing to play an hour-long battle over again. Other than that, this is a masterfully crafted game in every way that I highly recommend. You'd think people would be begging for more unique games like Valkyria Chronicles in a time when developers seemed content with making games that appear to be nothing more than entries to a contest to see who can fit in the most guns and explosions. <laughs> Seriously though, if you haven't played Valkyria Chronicles yet, you need to. It's an absolute must-have title for any PS3 owner. The game's about 4 years old and you can easily pick it up new for less than 20 bucks. Well, that's gonna do it for this debut episode of Shinkara. Thanks for watching everyone, we'll see you next time. Hey folks, thanks so much for watching my video, I really appreciate it. Be sure to toss me a like if you enjoyed the video, or give me a thumbs down if you didn't like it. It always lets me know how I'm doing. And let me know if you've played Valkyria Chronicles in the comments. It'd be cool to get a little discussion going about the game. And if you want to see some more of my other videos that I've done, go ahead and click those little annotations on a few indie games that I reviewed in the past. And that little subscribe button, it's, it's waiting for you. You can go ahead and just click on that thing. It'll be alright.